today uh, we're going to discuss about tracings coming from a uh, recorded by uh, devices boston scientific devices so there's going to be two sessions the first one about tracing and then the next one uh, will uh, <clears throat> analyze the different steps of interrogations and programming of a Boston scientific uh, pacemaker. Uh, so, Hugo Pierre, you are there? Yes. You need, we can. Yes, you. I'm there. Cool. Uh, what is this here? What do you see in this tracing? All right. So, um... We don't see the marker, but probably uh, A sense, V sense, A sense, V sense. Yes, okay. this is a Boston scientific dual chamber pacemaker. Yes. And what is this rhythmic here? Sorry for it's in French, but I'm sure you can understand. So, what is this? So, uh, we see uh, where it's written number two. Uh, you see that there's um, one P wave that is not conducted to the ventricle. Okay, but what is the rhythmic? Okay, rhythmic is, uh, well, it's the Boston Scientific algorithm, algorithm to uh, minimize ventricular pacing. So uh, it's AAI with VVI backup. Yes. And the way it works... Uh, and you know, you, you see the specificity here is that anytime there's going to be a switch. So it's a mode that has been uh, designed uh, to reduce uh, the avoidable uh, portion of the right ventricular pacing, the percentage of right ventricular pacing. And anytime there is a switch from AAI to DDD, an EGM will be recorded inside the memory of the device. So what you see here is an episode la labeled rhythmic because uh, the device has diagnosed an episode of uh, AV block and then switch from AI to DDD. And anytime you will see, you will have this kind of thing, an EGM will be recorded. So from the EGM, you can check if uh, the functioning of the al algorithm was correct or not. Okay. So you see the trading. So 20 seconds of EGM will be recorded for every switch from AI to DDD. So what you see here initially, atrial sensing, ventricular sensing, and then? And then you have uh, one blocked P wave. Yes, this P wave. So you see the atrial EGM, ventricular EGM, this, these uh, uh, P waves are conducted, but this one is blocked. So what happens? Uh, well, it's uh, and then it, it continues ASVS until yes. it reaches three out of 11 uh, long ventricular cycle. Yes, uh, the way it works is that so, first of all, with this kind of algorithm, you can encounter a block P wave, that's a possibility. And what you say is that it's an AAI pacing, but with VVI backup, okay. And what is different uh, in this algorithm compares to all the other ones uh, from Medtronic, it's not based on the analysis of uh, the atrioventricular conduction. It's not based on the fact that this P wave is blocked. It's just based on a VVI analysis, meaning that uh, there's gonna be a switch from AI to DDD if there are some uh, long ventricular cycles. Or of course, if, there is one block P wave, you will have a long uh, ventricular cycle. But it's not, the, the diagnosis is not to say, okay, this P wave is blocked, but the analysis is based on this is a long ventricular interval. So, how do you define a long ventricular interval? So, um, it's sense. Event, sense ventricular events that are 150 milliseconds longer than the program baseline heart rate. Yes. Or in, in uh, this patient, for example, uh, this patient has been programmed with a minimal heart rate of 60 beats per minute. So 60 beats per minute, the longer interval that you can encounter is one second. So 1000 milliseconds. Okay. So what will define a long ventricular interval 
is an interval longer from uh, at least 150 milliseconds longer than the longer interval. So for 60 bits per minute, 1000 milliseconds, a long ventricular interval is an interval longer than 1150 1, uh, milliseconds. So here you see it's 102. 288, so it's longer. So this one is considered as a long ventricular cycle. And then you have another block wave here. So here, this one is blocked. So this is a second interval that is considered long, longer two. And this one also is long, you see, and 1,300. So you have three long ventricular cycles out of 11, as you say. So you see one, two, and three. And then you will see the switch from AI to DDD. Okay, and you see the marker rhythmic. It means that this is the rhythmic algorithm and a switch from AI to DDD. Okay, any question on this? So that's the first part of the algorithm. Now a second patient, and it's the same, it's a rhythmic episode. So it has been recorded inside the memory of the device. So what happens now? Hugo Pierre, still there? Yeah, still there. So um... what, what you need to know to understand the functioning is the minimal heart rate that has been programmed. If you want to understand the interval and why it will switch or not, you need to know. This is an important question. You need to know the, the program minimal heart rate because that, that will influence the functioning of the device. So what happens here? So here you have ASVS, 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 and then you have one block P wave. Yes. And then you have a V pace at... Uh, 1,333 milliseconds. So this corresponds to uh, approximately 45 beats per minute. So it's uh, backup uh, pacing. Yes. Uh, in this algorithm, as I said, the idea is to pace the atrium if required, not to pace the ventricle, to decrease the amount of right ventricular pacing, but without allowing long ventricular pause. So there is a VVI backup. It means that if you program at 60 bits per minute, one long cycle is a cycle longer than 1,150 milliseconds, as I explained. But you cannot uh, have a longer interval, longer than 45 bits per minute. It means that, you see here, it's 1,333 seconds. If after this, interval, there is no ventricular sensing, then you will pace, then you will have a, a backup ventricular pacing. The idea is not to allow a very long pause because that, that can be some arrhythmia or things like that. So uh, if you program 60 bits per minute, the VVI backup will be at 45, so minus 15 bits per minute. If you program uh, a minimal heart rate, for example, of <clears throat> 55 bits per minute, then the backup pacing will be 40 bits per minute, minus 50. It can not be less than 30 and no more than 60. It means that if you program, for example, a, heart, a minimal heart rate of 40 bits per minute, it's not going to be 25, it's going to be 30. You cannot have less than 30 bits per minute. Okay? So, no ventricular sensing. It's not based once more on the analysis on the conduction of the atrium. It's not because this one is blocked. It's because here there's no ventricular sensing. So at 45 bits per minute, you will pace. And then you see this cycle is 1,170 bits per minute. So longer than 100, uh, 1,150 uh, 1, milliseconds. So this is also a long cycle. So this cycle is long. This cycle is long. And then you see another uh, block P wave, so another long ventricular cycle, you pace at 45 bits per minute, and then three out of 11, so you will switch to DDD. Okay, it's here an appropriate switching eh, since it's really a, a problem of atrioventricular uh, conduction block, so there is some block P wave, so it's appropriate that the device will switch from AI to DDD. Okay, so 
Once more, the specificity of this algorithm is not based on, you will not say it's because it's a two to one block or a third degree AV block, nothing to do with that. It's just analysis, at, it's a VVI. So there is a, a AAI, a spacing at the minimal heart rate, and in parallel, you have a VVI with VVI backup, uh, 15 bits uh, slower than the minimal heart rate that you have programmed. So with this, you cannot have very long ventricular pause, and then you will switch from when anytime you, you you will have three long cycles out of 11. Okay, any question? Nope. So now, what do you think here? It's once more one rhythmic episode recorded inside the memory. What happens? So yeah, we have uh, ASVS, ASVS, and then we have uh, probably a PVC. Yes, this one. Yes, with the Premature retrograde activity. conduction. Likely and, that it and then and then we have another PVC. Uh, here. Yeah. But how is this cycle? Yeah, it's considered long. Uh, yes, long. The question is that you need to know the minimal heart rate once more. A long cycles depends on the minimal heart rate that you have programmed. So, for example, here, for sure, it's not programmed at 60 bits per minute because if it was programmed at 60 bits per minute, then you will pace, you will have backup ventricular pacing after 1,333 milliseconds, like in the previous example. So here you have programmed the device slower. In this patient, it was programmed at 50 bits per minute. Okay, so 50 bits per minute uh, uh, corresponds to interval, minimal interval of 1,200. So this one is longer than the limit, which which will be 1,350 milliseconds. Okay, so this is a long cycle. And then another PVC, another long cycle, this one, one PVC, another long cycle, and then you will switch to DDD. So what do you think about this example? Well, this is, uh, so that is it is an, Inappropriate um, mod switch to uh, DDD. Yep, you're supposed to to switch in case of AV block. That's the idea of the algorithm. And in this case, there's absolutely no AV block. What you see are frequent PVCs with compensatory pauses after the PVC. And anytime you will have this kind of uh, situation, you may encounter a false uh, switch to DDD. Uh, because of the PVC. So in patients with frequent PVCs, uh, this algorithm is probably not appropriate because you will increase considerably uh, the percentage of right ventricular pacing uh, in total absence of uh, AV block. Uh, since everything is based on the ventricular intervals, any situation with uh, compensatory pause after a PVC, but also after a premature atrial contraction and all these kind of things, you will in this patient see many, many episodes of switch from AI to DDD and an increase, an inappropriate increase in the percentage of right ventricular pacing. Any questions on this? So that's the main limitation, in fact, of this algorithm. Yes, yes, excuse me. I just have one question about the just before the mod switch, uh, mm -hmm. we see a PVC and then AS, and that is not uh, considered as a, a spontaneous uh, atrial contraction. Like, I don't know why it's uh, written like this compared to the other ones following the PVCs. Like, Which one? The, the, one? Second, the, the second one on the right. You see PVC and then AS bordered by, uh, I don't know, parentheses, you know. <laughs> I don't know here, what, why it's not, yes. Here, What's the difference here, between... Uh, you? Now you are in DDD here. You see? Okay. So you have switched, you are in DDD. So here it is in the pivot of okay. this cycle, okay? Okay, it enables it, the pivot. When, then, it's, uh, when you are working in AI with BVI backup pacing, there's no pivot 
for example. You understand? Okay. You are, okay. it's, I will show you an example. Uh, I, I would say that the two channels are independent, you know, the atrial and the ventricle. So here you are close to the VS, but there is no PVAR in, in yeah. this yeah. rhythmic mode, okay? I will show you an example explaining that it's not completely true. The two channels are not completely independent. There are some refractory period, and I will show it. But remember that in rhythmic, there is no, um, no PVAR. There is no PVAR here. Okay. Thank you. Whereas in, uh, in when it functions in DDD, then there is a PVAR. Okay. The idea initially was to have completely independent channels, AI and then VVI backup without interference. It's not completely true, I will show you on, on an example, okay? This is the example. You see, what do you think here? Uh, so it's based in the atria. Once more, it's rhythmic. It's rhythmic. So APSR, what does it mean? Actually, I don't know. The sensor, the sensor, rate okay. adaptive function, okay? Okay. So maybe yeah. a bit of exercise. So initially, the conviction is correct. Actual pacing, actual sensing, actual pacing, actual sensing. And then what happens here? Yes. Uh, then the, uh, I guess there is a, a PVC. It's very likely that this is a PVC, yeah. But and uh, this PVC are... uh, falls in the uh, uh, the post uh, the, the blanking period, the ventricular post atrial stimulation uh, blanking period. So that, that's what I said initially. I said to you that uh, they were the channels are independent. That's not completely true. You cannot uh, make these two channels independent. When you pace the atrium, there must be. Uh, uh, blanking at the level of the ventricle because once more you pace in volts, you sense in millivolts. So if you do not protect the ventricle when you pace the atrium, for sure you will uh, detect and sense the actual pacing. Okay. So anytime okay. you pace the atrium, there's going to be. So the channels are not really independent. That when you okay. pace the atrium, there's going to be blanking at, level, at the level of the ventricle. What is uh, difference from the other manufacturers is that in Boston, there is no safety window. You know safety window? When you pace yeah. the atrium at the level of the ventricle, there is a blanking. And then in all the other ones, all the other devices, Medtronic, uh, Biotronic, Abbott, Micropult, there is a safety window. That's not the case in Boston. In Boston, you see the bracket here. It means that a si signal has been uh, sent in the noise window. Uh, I will not go too deep inside the function of the nose window, it's different than from the same the safety uh, window. Uh, so what you see here is that the PVC is detected inside the noise window. You, you see the marker yeah. inside the bracket, bracket means noise window, okay? Yeah. So this PVC is sense. But what do you see here? Uh, since uh, I guess the the PVC falls into the uh, into the noise window. Uh, the um, so there is a, um, a compensatory pose following the PVC, and so uh, the the device has to uh, to pace no, no, the, no, no. the. If you look carefully, there is no uh, pause here. You see that this signal is sense. Yes. But yes. for the device, the device does not. It's not know considered if, as a as a yeah. regular mm -hmm. beat. So yes, exactly. It, it, it doesn't pace, know if it's pace really pace. a PVC or if it is a cross talk, meaning that the ventricle the yeah. sends the atrium. Okay, so this is this. You see the the sign, but without interference for the device, there's nothing here. It, it shows it, yeah. but for the functioning of the algorithm, you see that. He will consider that this is not ventricular sensing, and then he will pace with uh, lack of pacing. Uh, uh, so, what is the program minimal heart rate? Uh, it's supposed to be, uh, I guess, uh, when, um, 
maybe uh, about 60 bits per minute? No. 60 bits per minute. Uh, one, you see the ventral pacing in 1200. Yeah. So it, this corresponds to 50 bits per minute, 50. But okay. you know that yeah. the backup yeah. pacing is the minimal heart rate minus 15 bits per minute. So what is the minimal heart rate? You pace uh, at so 50. It's, yep. So it's supposed to be 35, I guess. Um, oh, no. The other way. No, no, it's, <laughs> yeah. no, no I didn't understand the. Okay, so, so yeah, it's the minimal like, heart rate that you have programmed is 65. 65. Okay. So yeah. So, so 65 the minus 15, okay. you pace at 50. Okay. So okay. what I okay. So this the, once more, this is a PVC responsible of a false switch from AI to DD because when the PVC uh, just is just sends around the actual pacing, you will see this, okay. and then what happens here? You see here. Here it's not even uh, detected in the no noise uh, window because so it is now in the blanking. You know, you place the atrium, yep. there are something like 40 milliseconds of blanking at the level of the ventricle, okay? So this signal has not been sensed because it is inside the blanking, okay? So once you place the atrium at the level of the ventricle, there are two periods. The first one is the blanking, 40 milliseconds. This one is inside the blanking, so no marker. And you see that you will pace at 50 bits per minute, so backup DVI 50 bits per minute because the minimal heart rate is 65. And what you have seen just before, here the PVC is after the blanking, but in the noise window, but it will show it. You see the marker, but it will consider, okay, that may be cross talk, so I will pace in case this is cross talk to avoid a long ventricular pause, okay? So remember, yes. the PVCs, in fact, uh, are really important reason to uh, increase the number of inappropriate switch from uh, AI to DDD because of the ventricular pause, but also because of these refractory periods. When the PVCs fall just around uh, the actual pacing, you will have many, many episodes of false switch from AI to DDD. Okay. But Any supposedly, be, because of the, the lack of uh, the safety window, mm -hmm. if uh, if the the minimal uh, uh, pacing rate is uh, is quite high, there this kind of algorithm can be arithmogenic if there is yes uh, sure. a lot of PVCs. Okay. Yes, you see here, for example, that there is a PVC. And then you pace. So you are there is a bit of distance between the PVC, but yeah. you are not so far from the T wave. Uh, according to uh, the programming uh, of uh, the minimal heart rate and all this, sometimes you can see uh, uh, backup vascular pacing inside the T wave of the PVC, and that can okay. be homogenic. We have some tracing like that. Okay. Thank you. Question. Nope. Hugo Pierre, what do you think here? So once more, I will show you the rhythmic. It's important to understand it because you will see many tracings since they are recorded inside the memory of the device. And I think it's important to check anytime you will interrogate a Boston device. Uh, that's something quite particular in Boston device. Many things are recorded. If you compare Medtronic pacemakers and Boston pacemakers, if you uh, interrogate the device and check the memory of the device in a Medtronic device, there are very, very few number of tracing. You will see uh, if there is a problem of actual fibrillation and maybe a problem of ventricular tachycardia, something will be recorded, but you will never see in a Medtronic device a PMT or a switch in case of MVP. There are very few tracings recorded inside the memories of a Medtronic device. Uh, that's completely different, and I think that's a good thing uh, for Boston. You can really check uh, the way of functioning uh, the different algorithm. So what do you think here? Okay. All right, so um, here we have the marker VS hysteresis. 
Yeah. What is this? So it's looking for intrinsic AV yes. conduction. This is the search AV plus. A AV plus. We we're, we're gonna discuss just after, but okay, that's the case. The device is searching from entrance in conduction, and in this case, there is an entrance in conduction since ASBS, ASBS. And then what happens? And there, and then there's a block P wave. Yes. With well, I guess ventrator under sensing because we have no yeah. marker. Exactly. What you see here is that there is a normal conduction with a short PR interval. It's okay. And then if you look just at the EGM, you see that there is still conduction, but here there's no marker. And what you say of this corresponds to ventricular under sensing. And if there is ventricular under sensing, then you will pace. You see what is the minimal heart rate that has been programmed in this patient. Here it's 1,333. So 60. 60 since it corresponds to 40. 45 bits per minute as a back of BDI. But what you see here is that under sensing, so the device will consider that this is a pause and then you will pace. Uh, that's something which is particularly, I think, interesting in this kind of algorithm is that since you record an EGM, anytime there's going to be a switch from AI to DDD, you will see something that you will not see in the other devices. In fact, anytime there's going to be ventricular under sensing. If there is ventricular under sensing, the device will co uh, consider that there is a pause, it will pace, and it will switch, and it will record. So you will see even very infrequent under sensing, you will have the diagnosis. Okay, it's the same. Uh, anytime you have a loss of actual capture, if the patient has a sinus dysfunction, it will be actual pacing ventricular sensing. But if at one time there is a loss of virtual capture, you will have AP, but without capture, so we will not have VS. And if there is no VS, that's going to be a, a pause and then uh, a switch from AI to DD and then a recorded EGM. So you have an eye inside the device with this kind of algorithm. And then you will have the possibility to have a lot of diagnosis of infrequent problems. Uh, loss of actual pacing, uh, atrial under sensing, ventricular under sensing. This algorithm will work only if you have a, a, a proper functioning of the device in terms of actual pacing and ventricular sensing. So with this kind of thing, you, you can see uh, anytime there's going to be ventricular under sensing, boom, you will have the diagnosis, you see, okay? So the same here. You sense ventricular under sensing, so a pause and then back to ventricular pacing, okay? So once you have understood uh, uh, how it works, it's very simple, in fact. Eh? Three out of 11 long uh, uh, ventricular intervals and then a switch from AI to DVD, okay? Any question? So that's a good point of this algorithm, really. The possibility to have an eye inside the device and then to make some infrequent diagnosis. Of course, if there is a complete loss of virtual capture, anytime you will see the patient, you will have the possibility to see that there is a loss of virtual capture for sure. But when it is infrequent, with this algorithm, anytime you will lose the capture at the level of the atrium, boom, you will record an EGM, and then you will have the possibility to arrive to the diagnosis. And that's important, huh, you know, to, to make diagnosis of ventricular under sensing. For example, here, there is ventricular under sensing. And because of the ventricular under sensing, you have backup ventricular pacing. And as you say here, you're quite close to the T waves. So you can be arrhythmogenic. Ventricular under sensing can be, of course, a problem in a dual chamber pacemaker, because if you under sense, you will pace. And if you pace, you may pace uh, inside the vulnera vulnerable period and, and then and use an arrhythmia. Okay, well, that's pretty much the same tracing. What do you think here? See ASVS, ASVS. Once more, it's a rhythmic episode. It's a switch from AI to DDD, ASVS, ASVS, ASVS. And then that's probably a different signal. That's probably a late PVC. And this one, there is an under sensing of the PVC, and then you pace, and then that's a good point because you will have the diagnosis anytime you will see these kind of problems. 
any kind of one cloud licensing switch from AI to the EGM, and then the possibility for the physician to write the bag once more. Anytime you see a tracing labeled rhythmic uh, inside the middle of the device, usually I always look to all the tracing to see if it is appropriate or inappropriate, and to check that it does not uh, reveal a, a dysfunction of, of the device like here, uh, under sensing of the PVC. So as I said, um, this algorithm, the rhythmic, will work with the second one. It means that the rhythmic is the algorithm that allow the switch from AI to DDD in case of AV block. But once you have switched to DDD, then you need to program another algorithm that make possible the possibility to switch back from DDD to AI. And this is called the search AV plus. And you see here, so different parameters. I will show you next week when we'll see uh, the programmer, when we'll have a look to the programmer, the Boston programmer, I will show you how to program it and what are the parameters that you can program. But there is a second algorithm, the search AV plus. And then after a certain number of bits, here, the patient has switched from AI to DDD. Then the device will search for entrancing conduction. And during this search, you will see this marker, DSHY, I don't know how to say it. This is the hysteresis, okay? It means that there is an entrancing conduction. So there are different parameters that you can program or reprogram. And uh, I will show you next time how, how you have a look to this. So this is an hysteresis. It means that during this search period for uh, entrancing conduction, there cannot be block P waves. There is a prolongation of uh, the AV delay uh, up to a value of 400 milliseconds. But if after 400 milliseconds, let's consider, for example, this P wave, if after 400 milliseconds, there's no ventricular sensing, then you will pace. So at this time, there cannot be any block P waves, okay? That's not a possibility. So the advantage is that uh, when you search for entrancing conduction, there cannot be a block P wave. There are some inconvenience here. So this is a rhythmic episode, once more. So there is conduction here, conduction, conduction, conduction. And at one time there is AV block, so you will pace one, two, three long cycles. So you will switch to DDD. But after this, then you see you will work in DDD with a program AV delay. And at one time here, you see the prolongations of the AV delay. This is the search AV. You see, this is the normal AV delay. And then this is the function with the long AV interval, uh, AV delay. It means that at this time is searching for entrance in conduction. In this patient, there's no entrance in conduction. But of course, the risk of the long AV delay, you see, very long AV delay, it will favor the retrograde conduction. And then in these patients, you see that with this long AV delay, this, there is the onset of the tachycardia. VPMT, VPMT, AS, VPMT, AS. This is a PMT. And after 16 bits of VPMT, AS, VPMT, AS, then there is the interruption here of the PMT by the device that has recognized the PMT. Okay, so what are the messages here? Message are that uh, the search AV plus, I will show you how to program it, but the advantage is that this time there cannot be any block P waves since after every actual signal and a long AV interval, if there is no entrance in conduction, you will pace. The limitation, of course, is that you work for a certain number of cycles with very long uh, AV delay and with very long interval uh, AV delay, you can induce a PMT. So considering and that's something also which is very particular to Boston devices. Now, the PMT algorithm. For uh, a Boston device, a PMT 
will be a succession of 16 cycles with fixed interval VP actual sensing. This no, not too much variation in the interval between the VP and the AS. And it can be a PMT only if the ventricular rate is at the, uh, at the maximal tracking rate that you have programmed. It means that it has to be 16 cycle with ventricular pacing at the maximal tracking rate. Okay. For example, here it has been programmed at 130 beats per minute. If there is a succession of ventricular pacing and actual sensing slower than the max maximal tracking rate for a Boston device, it cannot be a PMT. By definition for a device, a PMT has to be at the maximal tracking rate. After 16 cycles, see here, the interval VPAS is fixed. There are 16 cycles VP maximal tracking rate AS. There is a suspicion of PMT. What is a bit different, and this is the only company like this, is that if there is a suspicion of PMT, there will not be any modification of the AV delay to prove that this is a PMT. That's the case in Abbott, in Medtronic, in Biotronic, in Microport. If there is a suspicion in these four companies of PMT, then the device will modify the AV delay to verify to, that this is clearly a PMT and not a sinusitis cardiac. That's not the case in a Boston device. After 16 of these cycles, on one cycle, it will systematically prolong the TVARP, and you see this signal falls inside the TVARP, and then there's going to be an interruption. That there, is, there are some advantages to this function, but there are also some inconvenience, and I will show it. Okay, so remember, search AV plus the risk is the risk of PMT. That's the same here. You see, there, this is a search. So this episode has been recorded as a PMT. As I, as I explained before, there are many things that are recorded in Boston devices. The switch in Rhythmic, but also the episode of PMT are systematically recorded inside the memory of the device. And you see here, there is a search, AP DS hysteresis. So it, it works with long AV delay. At one time, there is a pack here, long, AV delay, long AV delay, and then induction of a PMT, you see? And in this patient, for example, there were many, many, uh, if the, the patient has only one or two episodes of PMT, that's not a big deal. But in these patients, anytime there was a search, anytime there was a prolongation of the AV delay, there was induction of a PMT. So many, many, it was thousands of episodes of PMT. So that can be clearly a problem, a clinical problem at this time. Okay, so the same functioning after six of PMTAS, PMTAS, diagnosis of PMT, prolongation of the PVARP, and then interruption of the PMT.